Chad here with Purple Car Life. You can see I've got the MS290 out today, and I've got to admit something a little bit embarrassing. The other day I did a video about cold starting the MS290 and the MS271. If you haven't seen that one, watch it after this one. I'll put a link at the end of this video. But the MS290 I've had for 18 years. And when I was doing that cold start video, I explained about the back here, how you can change the pre-filter in the air box. And let me show you that. I explained how you just flip that switch, this back cover comes off, and that this pre-cleaner for the air cleaner has two sides. There's the side that shows the sun and the side that shows the snowflake. And depending on which way is up, that determines the air that gets into the air filter. And I showed how flipping this so that the snowflake was up is how you should run it for wintertime. But that's really only half of what you should do to run this for wintertime. Now I mentioned before this air filter needed replaced. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the real way to run this for wintertime and we're going to replace this air filter. So we'll start on the air filter here. I went to my local steel dealership and got the new filter. You can see this one was pretty dirty, definitely needed replaced. I'm gonna use some compressed air to clean this out. I've got a lot of sawdust in there. And always when you're using any compressed air, you wanna use safety glasses. So like I said, flipping this around does change it from, in this case, summertime mode to, in this case, wintertime mode. And I'll put the page from the instructions that describes this into the video here. But also, this is just half of what you're supposed to do. And after 18 years of owning this steel chainsaw, I just now learned this. In order to truly make this run in the cold weather the best it possibly can. You wanna take your spark plug boot off, use the screwdriver, and pop this out, and then rotate this, just like this, so that this box, this square hole is open. Then you reattach your spark plug, reinsert your pre-filter so that the snowflake is up. And you can see what that allows to happen is it allows some of the heat from the engine to come through here, through this mesh part of the air filter, the air pre-filter, and that warm air then helps warm the engine up a little bit faster. So let's go ahead and put our new air filter on. Putting this new air filter on is easy. Just wanna line up this piece with that slot. And that forces these screws to line up. And then there is the true winter mode. I've got that square hole opened, the mesh side down with the snowflake facing up, and that allows that warmer air to recirculate back through the chainsaw and stay warmer in those cold weather temperatures. And again, I can't believe I've been doing that wrong this whole time. I was flipping the pre-filter around, and maybe that still helps, maybe some of the heat still passed through. I never had any trouble in the winter time, but I did learn after reading the manual 18 years later that you're also supposed to rotate that piece underneath the spark plug boot to allow that square to be open in the winter time. Then you wanna make sure as it warms up, you flip that back over, flip the pre-filter back over so that you're not overheating your saw. You would never want all that heat on a hot day to be coming in and recirculating and causing an overheat situation for your saw. So let's go ahead and put this back on. And there we are ready for winter operation. 
And that'll show how easy it is and how quickly you can switch it back to summertime. I'll demonstrate that here. Again, I'm gonna take the pre-filter out, pull the spark plug boot off, use the screwdriver tool to loosen this little piece that rotates. And this piece can swivel, but it also comes out. It's a rubbery piece. So then I'm just gonna put it back around the spark plug and back into where it slides in to block that square hole. Put the spark plug boot back on. Put the pre-filter back in so that the sunshine is up. And there you have summertime mode. Now while we have the chainsaw in here, we're gonna go ahead and just give it a little bit of a clean up. Check it over. Now on the MS290, these are not captive nuts. So like I said previously, I don't usually even take these off anymore because I'm sharpening the chain on the bar. It's actually time to flip that bar over though, and you're gonna see this is pretty dirty inside here. We also wanna make sure that all the holes are open that allow the oil to get through. I use the screwdriver just to clean out the track here. And then I have this steel multi-purpose oil. And I just put a thin coat either directly on a rag or on the bar and just wipe it with a little thin coat of that to help protect it, help keep things lubricated, spray a little bit in the track. Now I'm sure there'll be no surprise to you knowing that I've done this wrong for 18 years to know that I also was not operating the 271 correctly in wintertime mode. So I'll show you how to do that. But I do wanna get this cleaned up first. There's a lot of gunk in here. And then the same thing here, I like to take a little bit of the multi-purpose oil, just spray it at the top here, and then wipe around. I know some people keep their saws totally meticulous. Obviously I do not. I try to take good care of it all the time, but it's not perfectly clean like some of the saws I've seen other people keep. We'll go ahead and put the chain and the bar back on. It drives me crazy when the bar is upside down, but I'll go ahead and do that just to rotate it around. Now it's gonna drive me crazy having that bar upside down. But it's only temporary. I'll flip it back over here in a couple weeks. There we go, the MS290 back in business for wintertime operation. Now let me show you how the 270 gets changed into winter mode. Since I only knew about the pre-filter on the MS290, I didn't realize there was anything to do in the MS271. 
to prepare it for winter mode. But again, I was wrong. So we're gonna remove the three screws that hold the engine cover in place. And that comes off easily. You can see there is no pre-filter, so I didn't think there was a way to winterize this, but there is. You can see right here, you can see right here that, that there's a slot for the screwdriver to go in, grab underneath that orange part and pull out. And this, this piece is also labeled as sunshine and snowflake. So in order to get the heat from the engine to come in here to help warm up the chainsaw, after I pulled that out, we're just gonna flip it around so that the snowflake mode is in. And you can see how that allows, let me take the air filter off, it'll make it easier to see. That little square allows heat to escape from the engine, heat up this area where your air is going in, it helps warm up the chainsaw faster and keep it warmer. So again, I didn't know that about the 271, but now we all know. And then when winter is over and you're ready to put it back in summertime mode, again, you just put the screwdriver in there to slide that out. You'll rotate this around 180 degrees, slide it back in so that that square is closed off and then you're in summertime mode. Go ahead and put the engine cover back on. We'll take a look under here. Before we take a look under here, just wanted to say if you haven't already, make sure you go down and click that like button. We really appreciate it. It helps the video rank higher on YouTube, gives us more views, gives us more subscribers, and helps our channel grow. So we really appreciate it if you hit the like button. And again, these are not captive nuts, so they are easily lost. I like to have a couple spares in my toolbox. And that those holes are letting the oil get through. Now that we've got both chainsaws correctly in winter mode, let's see if they start up a little bit easier and run a little bit better. Now these are both cold, haven't been run yet. We'll do the 271 first. Now we do need to give the chain a little bit of a tighten up here, so let's go ahead and do that. Many of you watching probably know your ways around a chainsaw better than I do, but if there's anybody who isn't sure how this works, what I'm doing to tighten up the chain is I just loosen these two nuts just enough that the, the chain will tighten, and then the screwdriver tool inside here is a little tightener, and you'll see that when you turn it clockwise, it tightens the chain. Now you don't want it too tight. You still want to be able to pull it down out of the bar. Because if you make it too tight, it does bind on itself. And then you want to retighten these two nuts that hold the bar and chain in place. And this great tool comes with every chainsaw that I know of, especially from a brand like Steel. See if that's better. Now 
I could instantly tell a difference in that MS-271 having moved it to wintertime mode. If you watch my previous video about cold start, you'll know it did not start up that easily and it took a while for it to warm up. Now I did do a, th a couple things different this time. I left it on half choke a little bit longer to let it warm up a little bit on half choke and then flip the choke off. Okay, now we'll give the MS-290, otherwise known as Old Reliable, the same test. Well, it's almost the middle of February. Winter's going to be ending here not too long, maybe a couple months. But now I officially have both of my steel chainsaws in winter mode. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, make sure you click that like button. If you're not a subscriber, click the subscribe button. And if you already knew how to properly winterize your saw, or if you didn't know, go ahead and comment down below. It'd be nice to hear that I'm not the only one that's been doing this wrong for 18 years. Thanks. We'll catch you again the next time.